Welcome to a new edition of Sun City News. I'm your host, Norma Taylor, and here are some of the news stories we're covering for you this week. We have important community association news. Reporter Chris Chase reports on the recent NRC meeting. We have an interview with Sun City Community Manager, Stacy Jacobs. Those stories and more are coming up. Sun City News starts now. This is Sun City News with Norma Taylor and the Sun City News team covering our community and the Low Country. Sun City Hilton Head seeks volunteers to serve on board appointed committees in the upcoming year. To learn more about the committees, log into suncityhiltonhead.org and click the BOD and BAC link. The BAC interest form can be found on the Volunteering in Sun City page of the community website. Room reservation requests for July through December may be submitted starting at 8 a.m. on March 4th. Residents may submit requests by emailing judy.cunningham at schca.com. The room reservation request form is available to download from the community library section of suncityhiltonhead.org. Mark your calendar for the 10th annual Home and Garden Expo from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, March 2nd at Pickney Hall and the Pavilion. Now more than 70 home improvement vendors will be on site to answer questions, showcase their specialties, and suggest ways to beautify your home. Atlantic hurricane season begins June 1st, but now is the time to start preparing for severe weather. Mark your calendar for the annual Hurricane Preparedness Seminar, scheduled for May 16th in Pickney Hall. Then, download a copy of the Community Association's Hurricane Preparedness Guide from suncityhiltonhead.org in the Community Library section. For more information about these events and other community activities, Check your email inbox for E! News Weekly or log on to suncityhiltonhead.org. What is going on in the 28 acres next to Sun City? Reporter Chris Chase talks to Joel Taylor at the recent NRC meeting to find out. Well, Joel, thank you for being with us today. Absolutely. Now, one question that's been asked a lot is, what's the difference between urgent care and your facility? Gotcha. Well, thank you for the question. It's a very important piece of what we're trying to publicize out there. The difference between a freestanding emergency department and urgent care is a couple things. One, hours of service. We'll have a board certified physician there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The other is we're really there for emergent and significantly urgent issues. If you believe you have the flu, you should go to the urgent care. If you've fallen, hurt your hip, um, have unexplained weakness, we're there. The, we'll have CT on site, so 24 hour uh, access to imaging. We'll have lab on site, so if you have unexplained chest pain, we're there to take care of you. So the significant difference is really what we're able and should be treating at an emergency room versus an urgent care setting. Well, that makes sense. Now, how are you staffing this facility? Okay, so it will be staffed by a board-certified physician 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Um, next month, we'll actually post, um, we'll be recruiting new employees, approximately 50 new employees to staff this facility around the clock. Um, we'll have RNs there on site, uh, along with the physician, respiratory therapists, lab technicians, imaging technicians, all there ready and able to take care of people when they come in. Now, staffing hasn't been that easy for you, though, has it? It, it is a challenge. It is a challenge. You know, this area is growing so much, keeping up with that pace and specifically the healthcare workers. So we're reaching out into surrounding communities, certainly incumbent upon us. And part of what I take seriously as the CEO is just the environment in which we ask people to work. Um, and I'm proud to say that at Hilton Head Regional Healthcare, our turnover rates are well below the national average, and we have people seeking us out to work here. So when they move here, they come to us, uh, which is a nice place to be. Now, what's going to make your facility unique? The freestanding ER is unique, one, because it's the first freestanding emergency department in the low country. The second piece is it's only the fifth in the state, and this is a relatively new advent within the healthcare arena. The desire being so close to residential, um, that, that it's that immediate access availability that's the difference. 
Now, where exactly is your facility going to be located? Okay, great question. So the facility is on the corner of Tidewatch Drive and 170. So as you head north on 170 from 278, that first light is Tidewatch Drive. And I know many Sun City residents know that. The, the facility itself will be up against Highway 170, wanting to protect uh, the fact that it is a residential area. Well, thank you so much, Joel, for spending Absolutely. time with us today. Thanks, Chris. Pleasure. Thank you. This is Chris Chase for Sun City TV News. Sun City Community Manager Stacy Jacobs is with us to discuss how community standards is changing to accommodate our growing population and how we should approach spring improvements to our homes. Well, welcome, Stacy. We appreciate you checking in with us on a regular basis. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to sit here and be able to speak to the community about what's going on in community standards. Well, now that the weather is getting warmer here, uh, what should our residents be preparing for in regards to community standards? We want our owners to go ahead and be proactive and check for needed power washing of the home exterior to include walkways and driveways. We want the look and the condition of your mailbox post to be up to par. So there is paint available at the facility's maintenance yard. If you like the DIY projects, do-it-yourself projects, or residents can contact the woodworker shop for a price to have the work done at the very reasonable cost. Now, spring is always a very busy time here. So our residents are going out and they're looking to beautify their yards and, and their exterior home modifications. So what steps should our residents take in the event of they want to do some exterior modifications? Residents looking to change their landscaping or add an exterior home modification should visit this new Sun City website to obtain a modification application that best fits their project. Modification applications can be located on the resident central page under the community library forms tab. Remember to review the Sun City design guidelines as well, which are also located on the website under the community library document tabs. And these will assist in preparation for meeting with a modifications coordinator. Now there are a lot of new residents coming here. Our population is increasing in numbers. Now will Sun City 101 include a, a tech component to get them up to speed that much quicker? Um, I am currently working with communications and the members of the leadership committee and also the newcomers group to reinvent the Sun City 101 orientation. With that being said, the presentation will have information regarding the new technologies available to residents to assist in navigating through all of the wonderful amenities as well as information to keep them informed about living within the community. Now, how has the community standards changed since you became community manager? Well, I uh, providing immediate on-site notifications to residents, which allows them to address items noted during a during inspection faster. We've also added a part-time position to assist with property inspections. I am also working closely with the inspectors on lots that are unkept due to foreclosures and other delicate situations where a resident is unable to care for their property. Our number, our number one priority is resident satisfaction here in Sun City. Yes, and, and, and to that extent, I think most of our residents are extremely satisfied living in paradise, so to yes. speak. Yes, right? <laughs> I agree. Well, thank you, Stacy, for coming on and giving us continued updates. Well, thank you, Norma. I appreciate it very much. When we come back, our wine whisperer, Tina Thompson, reports on Latin American wines, some on-the-street questions from the Breeze anchors, we have an interview on the Low Country Heritage Center. And Joanne Hines fills us in on what's coming up on ION. We'll be right back after these important messages. Tina Thompson, our wine whisperer, is here to talk about the emergence of Latin American wines. Tina? The wine scene is evolving. Enter Grand Cata, a Latino wine company. Recently, Vine Pair contributor Chastity Cooper wrote that the owners Julio Robledo and Pedro Rodriguez opened a specialty wine store in the heart of Northwest DC. Their charge is to raise awareness about diversity of Latin American wine. Robledo says, through a bottle of wine, we can tell a story, share how we grew up, and in a way, bring part of our family here to the city. Open in March 2016, you walk into the open concept wine shop immediately greeted by the sounds of Latin music and a very friendly staff called Catadores. 
featured our New World wines from Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile. Now, Latin American wine has a reputation of being cheap or unrefined, bottom shelf. The drinks business publication wrote, Chile, High and Mighty, in May 2018. Its author, Patrick Smith, states that Chile is repositioning itself as a producer of top quality, higher price wines. The six page article stories the evolution of Chile's 500 year winemaking history, describing land well suited to growing the globe's most sought after international grapes. Now you may recall Concha y Tora was number 70, scored 90 in Wine Spectator's 2018 Top 100. Let's put some of them to the test. Concha y Toro Gran Reserva Series Rabiris Carmenere, 2016, $17. Deep, dark red in color with lush aromas of cherries, black currant, and blackberry. Pairs well with pan-seared or grilled duck, magret in France or other meats with sweet and sour sauces. Smoking Loom Syrah 2016, $10. It offers lush aromas of blueberry and vanilla bean. Blueberry pie, creme brulee and toasted brioche. These flavors are a perfect balance. Mayu Sauvignon Blanc 2016, $15. An intensely aromatic dry white wine with ripe gooseberry, citrus, and apple fruit flavors with crisp acidity. Great with shellfish and other seafood. Go explore some lesser known regions for your next wine tasting. Pleasant surprises await. Thanks for watching. I'm Tina Thompson. Make sure you check out the Bluffton Sun for our treatment of our Tina. Residents have the answers for Doug Wright and Tina Thompson of The Breeze. Hi, I'm here with my fellow Breeze panelists, Margie and Tina, outside Perrysburg building, where we are going to attempt to talk to residents about the impact of having good friendships on their happiness and how they might define friendship. We look forward to some interesting answers. You look like a happy person. Do you uh, count good friendships among the happiness formula? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think that we're all one happy family, and uh, uh, my, my happiness, a large part, is due to other people. Good friendships are probably what makes me the happiest thing in the world. I would say among my friendships are my dog, which I got after my husband passed away, which has really made life different for me, and um, I have some very, very close friends. Oh yeah, absolutely. I have good friends and it makes me happy. I have a great life and my wife and kids and grandkids and, and that's what makes me happy. Uh, how do you define a good friendship? Mutual respect, mutual trust. Discover more of the South Carolina Low Country. The Morris Center's director, Kaylee Vaughn, has all the details. Well, welcome Kaylee to Sun City TV. Well, I'm glad to be here today. Thanks for having me. Well, we're always glad to hear of new places of interest in the area. Well, um, I'm glad to, to tell you a little bit more about the Morris Center. So, Now, what is the Morris Center for Low Country Heritage, and what is the mission of the organization? So we're a small museum. We're located in Ridgeland, South Carolina, so not very far from here. And we really are about preserving the history and culture of this region, specifically Jasper County, Beaufort County, Hampton, and Colleton County. Now, what kind of programs and exhibitions uh, does the Morris Center offer? So we always have an in-house exhibit. So right now we have Living by the Rails, and it's about the history of the railroad in the Low Country area. We also have a couple of traveling exhibits right now, um, too. We have Look Forward, which is a photography exhibit, as well as we just opened Jonathan Green's uh, exhibition on loan for the McKissick Museum in Columbia. Wow, 
lot yeah. of interesting things going on yeah. there. Now, what are the responsibilities of a docent or a volunteer at the Morris Center? So we are, per we actually are recruiting docents at this moment. Um, we haven't really given tours in the past, but we're hoping to ramp that up um, moving forward this year and want to have more guided tours for people who come to the museum who want a little bit extra. And also for schools, we would love to have students be able to have a guided tour of the museum. So with docents, we would love for them to be able to come and they'll be trained on how to give tours. And then they will be uh, leading these tours of the center moving forward. And if anyone doesn't want to give a tour, we always have volunteer opportunities, whether it's helping with uh, uh, events or helping with administrative tasks we always have uh, we are always needing help because we're like I said a staff of two so whatever help we can get we'll take <laughs> so, yeah. now where exactly is the Mara Center and what are its hours all right so we're located right on the corner of Highway 17 and Main Street in Ridgeland South Carolina so we're right there in the heart of town and we're at a 1937 gas station which is really fun so you can't miss us you, you see the white stucco building with the terracotta and the gas pumps you know that we're, you're at the right place so, and um, we're open Tuesdays through Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now, if someone want, wants to volunteer, what do they do? Who do they contact? Uh, you can actually fill out a volunteer application on our website. Our website is morrisheritagecenter.org and just go to uh, the volunteer tab at the top of the page. Or you can give us a call at the center. Our number is 843-284-9227 and ask to speak to me, Kaylee. <laughs> Okay, Kaylee. Well, thank you for visiting us and bringing us this very, very enlightening conversation and information about the center, the Mars Center. Yeah, thanks for having me. What's happening in our neighborhoods? Let's listen in for a taste. It doesn't seem possible that it's been a year since we started shooting In Our Neighborhoods. For the month of March, we will interview a neighborhood reps from Cedar Run a social chair from Willowbrook Village, and the monument sign decorator from Edgewater. Stay tuned. There is much more to come on Sun City News. Randy Selman's here with an entertainment report. We find out what's coming up on the breeze. And Ray Tapio talks about a St. Patrick's Day social and golf croquet in his sports report. We'll return after some messages from our sponsors. Well, Randy's here, so it must be time for entertainment. And Randy, it seems like February is zipping right by us. I agree, Norma, but wait until you hear what's coming in March. The Sun City Sun Tones are kicking it up a notch, hence the title of their new show, Kicking It Up a Notch. The Sun Tones are a women's a cappella group consisting of 26 members who sing many types of music, including show tunes, rock and roll, smooth soul, and spirituals. They'll also wow the crowd with a moving patriotic piece that will touch your heart. Their second annual dinner cabaret in Pickney Hall will be presented on Sunday, March 10th. Doors open at 4.30 p.m. and you will be treated to a three-course dinner catered by Chef's Cornerstone Cafe. After a sweet dessert, the true finishing course will be the Sun Tones Concert. Tickets are $29, which includes the show and dinner. You can order tickets by calling 843-705-3907 or 814-720-6457. On Friday, March 8th, Magnolia Hall will be transformed into a magical kingdom as the South Carolina Ballet presents The Sleeping Beauty. Tickets are $27 and include a champagne reception in the pavilion at 6 p.m. The ballet performance begins at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are available online or at Lifestyle Services. On Thursday, March 21st, be sure to put on your dancing boots, flannel checkered shirt, and comfy jeans, and mosey on down to the pavilion for Sun City's first ever country music night. Georgia Boys, Hamrick, and Haynes open the night with popular country covers and originals. Headlining the event is the all-female powerhouse group Farewell Angelina, who were named Rolling Stone's new artist We Need to Know. Tickets are $20 and include a barbecue dinner and one drink ticket. Show tickets are available online or at Lifestyle Services. Doors open at 4 p.m. The Tony Award-winning musical Drowsy Chaperone opens in Magnolia Hall on Friday, March 22nd. 
Tickets are available at the Magnolia Hall's box office. More on Drowsy Chaperone ne on next week's show. I'm Randy Selman, and that's your entertainment report. Remember, life is entertaining, so don't miss the show. Is the answer, my friends, blowing in the breeze? They give us a hint. Hey Margie, when you get up in the morning, looking in the mirror, do you like what you see? After a while I do, and it encourages me to get out there and do things better than I did yesterday, and maybe even strive for the best. What about you, Doug? Well, I always try to look good for my agenda, but if I don't, I got a best friend at home to tell me. I know, Bo will do that. <laughs> that is a good friend. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what do you think? Let's talk about being happy and what a friendship is for our next show. Great idea. Tell Sounds you what, good. let's talk about the nature of friendship on next month's episode when we again shoot the breeze. Well, it's time for sports, and Ray Tapio's here. Ray, it looks like the ball's in your court. You've got tennis, softball, and croquet. So true, Norma. The fun never ends. Tennis players of all levels. It is not too early to sign up for the fun event of the year. The Sun City Tennis Association is hosting a St. Patrick's Day tournament for the members on March 16th. This is a fun event for any level player, and then the real fun starts at the social at 6 p.m. with music and food. Hurry to the logo building and sign up as players are limited, and this event usually sells out early. Wearing of the green is optional. Hey, softball fans, need to get to the field early on March 2nd for opening day of the co-ed softball league. Then on March 7th, the Tuesday-Thursday league goes into action. Both games commence at 8 a.m., so get there early to get a good seat. Mary McQueen, the president of the club, promises to keep us posted on all events. Our croquet club tells me that they have a game that is easier than the standard croquet. It is called golf croquet, and it is easy to learn and quicker to play. Visitors are welcome at the course on Tuesday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays from 1 to 3 p.m. Stop by and visit our great croquet courts. You just might go out and buy a set of whites. Ray Tapio for Sun City Sports. Well, that's our show for this week. Thank you for watching. We invite you to check out Sun City TV's weekly program schedule in Sensations Magazine. And now check highlights and alerts on Twitter at SunCityTVHHI. Also, email us at SunCityTVHH at gmail.com. And make sure you tune in next week to find out all the news that's happening in our community. In the meantime, I hope your week is full of only good news. For Sun City News, I'm Norma Taylor, and I'll see you next week. Now, to see extended coverage of your favorite news segments, tune in to Extra. Check the current Sensations magazine for Daily Times.